What is going on, everybody? It is Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. That means it is time for the tagline. What's going on, everyone? We're the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. You're muted. Hey. There you go. Try it again. Stop muting me. Yeah, I'm Chris Adams. Oh, okay, cool. That's what the name Glad says. We got that out of the way. Yeah. Oh, man. What a day, y'all. What a day. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> nothing special about today. Don't worry about it. No, nah, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing happened today at Regular all. Regular Tuesday. Regular yeah, Tuesday. just you know, got got some sleep. I got to sleep in. Had a day off. So yeah, nice. Yeah. It, was, it was great. Nice nothing relaxing day. Just a mm-hmm. super relaxing day. Nothing, nothing to be tense about. <laughs> at all. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna get to uh, we're gonna get to talking about uh, a little event that happened today here in a little bit. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who is live in the chat. I see Vernon. I see Brett. Ooh. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun tonight, y'all. Um, typically, as always, uh, with any YouTuber, uh, if you have questions, comments, anything you want to ask about anything that has particularly happened today, uh, there is streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics. That is a good place Good place for that. Uh, I can't talk anymore. Uh, there's also the super chat. If you'd like to do that, Streamlabs is the most preferred. Also, I do want to point out patreon.com slash cinefanatics. Hop on the tier that you want to hop on that sounds good to you. And we're going to actually talk about a new, uh, was it, a new benefit at a tier tonight. We'll talk mm-hmm. about that here in a little bit. But yeah, if y'all want to go do all those things, that will help us out great. Of course, also make sure you like, comment below if you're watching this on a replay, and don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, nailed it. What nice. did happen today? Uh, I mean, there's some things I, you know, did the usual. The usual Tuesday stuff, you know. So got up, uh, went got to the bathroom, up. and made breakfast tacos. Oh, I missed the breakfast tacos. Mm, oh, no, man. I got the breakfast tacos. I made them with brisket too, like really good. <laughs> that explains a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I had to, I had to beef up on my beef today. Um, <laughs> so other things coming out pretty soon that I want to announce. Of course, this Friday we do have our live breakdown review of. What is this? The fourth episode of the Winter Soldier of Fat Wuss? Falcon Fat and the Wuss. Winter Soldier? Fat yes. Wuss. Oh, yeah, man. Apparently three that's more. okay. We have a big cancel for calling it that, so we're just going to continue doing so. Three more episodes to carry that one through, huh? Yeah, I know. I'm kind of glad that'll be over pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> Not the show, but just the... the. Eh, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Moving yeah, on. That's going to be... That'll be this Friday, probably. Oh no, this Friday. It's probably going to be like around uh, this. It'll, it'll be on Friday this time. It won't be Saturday this week. It will be Friday, but it'll be pushed back a little bit due to uh, certain events in the uh, Schmodown world. We that's yeah. just call it what it is. Yeah. Uh, so. so therefore, if y'all aren't familiar with us, we are big fans of the movie trivia Schmodown, and the Schmodown uh, has this season has decided to create something new called the First Class League. Or we like to call it the first in the Fanatics League. I know. Now, obviously, we talked about this a little bit about two weeks ago because we weren't, we didn't do a tagline last week. But two weeks ago, we did mention that uh, the two of us are in the first class league. For those yeah. of you who just for some reason who aren't keeping up somehow. Yeah. So uh, that happened today. So there was, uh, I had a match in the first class league and it was a lot of fun to play. And uh, so I was want to keep wait. Hey, Chris, do you see that that there's there's someone else in here? Yeah, what's there's usually it's usually just us two. What's what's going on here? Why is there? Why is yeah, we haven't person? had a thir- we haven't had a third person in a long time. Yeah, who's who's? Oh man, this guy again! Oh, Look, man, geez. we got to talk. I'm what? I stand by what I said on twitter this is bull your win is sure take it you need this win more than i do but i need to figure out what's going on with the first class league and their view is skew situation there, there's a lot of partnerships going on and it seems a little uh skewed in my opinion yeah that it does 
Yeah, yeah. You sound so cocky now, but just wait, man. There's there's round two. There's two Adams. There's one me. I could take you both. No <laughs> Kevin Smith questions. Unless I get them. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, let's welcome to the show Mr. Uh, Andrew Furtado here. Uh, thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you um, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so again, like we were saying, there was a lot of fun that we that we've had today, and uh, we kind of wanted to bring you on because uh, first and foremost, nobody knows who the hell you are. <laughs> they do now. Who they know are I'm full you? Of, <laughs> they know I'm full of bull. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so uh, yeah, I, we wanted some time to kind of like just like I guess introduce you to uh, the world essentially. Uh, kind of get like your background and what your what your exposure, your interaction, where where your connection to Schmodown comes from. So, for sure, uh, yeah. Oh man, yeah, well, we'll start with just who are you? <laughs> well, uh, I'm actually mainly an editor for film, TV, uh, and currently uh, post production supervisor for a company called Severn Films, which um, we preserve and restore films that don't deserve it. And uh, that's kind of like our bread and butter is uh, movies. You're like, oh, that sounds terrible. And we're like, well, don't worry. We're putting it on on Blu-ray. Um, and it's been a joy. And I've been doing it for almost five years now. Mainlining right. is my my full-time job. And uh, before that, I, I've worked with uh, mainly in horror and horror community people. And uh, I've edited for people like Clive Barker and uh, Shout Factor. I've restored uh, films for David Cronenberg and all these other people. And it's just been something that I've just been very passionate about is restoring films. Like um, uh, people made fun of my modern romance poster here uh, <laughs> in the chat. I was watching through my narcissistic self, watching through the, the comments to see if people liked uh, what was going on and uh, people coming throw, throwing shade at Al Albert Brooks. And I was, oh. I was shocked. It wasn't even uh, the Ethan you said. They're like, oh, he's got that poster behind him. I hope he loses. Like, geez. I loved it. I loved it so much. And uh, yeah, no. And, and so those are the kind of films, like um, a lot of vintage, a lot of vintage films and stuff like that, that I really, uh, I know for the back of my head, but I also know they'll never show up on Smo now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, this, this is really cool. I heard like, I heard that, was it one of them was like Birdemic or something like that? Oh, yeah. One of the company, yeah. uh, one of our biggest first films was Birdemic Shock and Terror. And uh, yeah, that, uh, don't worry. There there was a sequel. Why? Who knows? But uh, the, yeah, that was, um, that was before my time. But that was actually the movie that made it. So I learned what this company was. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I like I've looked up Severn Films. Like I had heard of Severn Films before, but now because for some reason there's a connection here, there's a connection here, Andrew. Oh, um, that I've You're looked up out. more. Oh, uh oh, okay. Well, Kevin since, Smith. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> since I since I was playing you, I've looked up more of like what Severn Films was, and I was like, okay, this is this looks along along the lines of what uh. Uh, was it Sage St Stallone was doing? He bought like a like a was it Grindhouse, like a Grindhouse Productions or something, and they re-released like a bunch of older like Grindhouse type movies, like uh, yeah. Ca Cannibal Holocaust. And yeah, stuff. Uh, Bob Murawski actually uh, editor to Sam Raimi. Uh, that's his company too, and uh, they they put out some of the best stuff. Man, they put out pieces which if you haven't seen, oh my god! But uh, yeah, our our niche at Severin really is. Um, uh, Blu-rays of movies that are kind of like other movies. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one director in particular who I'm going to choose to showcase for this. Is uh, His name is Bruno Mattei. And his big thing is finding a way to make every movie aliens. So uh, he made a movie that came out in Italy for like a month before they got sued and, and had to change the name. But it came out in Italy as Terminator 2. Uh, before there was a second Terminator, and it oh. is ninety nine percent just the script of Aliens, <laughs> done with like crazy, like it's beautiful. <laughs> like I've heard it, of this, but everyone That's has fantastic. like a hard Chicago accent, and so <laughs> and it was filmed in Italy. But everyone's like, "What is going on here?" Oh God! And he did another movie uh, that we put out that was a Dawn of the Dead remake. But uh, no, it's not Dawn of the Dead. It's Aliens. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, I need to look. I need to look this up because I love uh, aliens. So that's brilliant. 
dude and they're they're not good but they're great and we're yeah. uh, we're actually just putting out uh he, he did a bunch of rambo ripoffs which um if you don't think you found a way to stick aliens in there you'd be wrong uh, but uh, it's beautiful like he, he genuinely is just a, an auteur of uh of of auteurable i'm not proud of what i just tried but i went for it <laughs> <laughs> there's something to be cherished about like the the old bad movies though because like i mean the most famous of which would be like the room like there's there's so yeah. much like you watch the room there's joy in watching that because it's it's just not good and everyone has so much fun watching it so it's actually a really cool thing to bring like some of those old movies that are bad it's because they're, they're done they're with fun, good man. intent they're done yeah. with good intent and pure hearts. And that's genuinely like, they're not making a bad movie. They're just bad at making movies. And <laughs> that's a badge of honor, man. You got something. I mean, coming from someone who's lived in LA for over 10 years, like it's hard to get anything off the ground. If you found a way to find someone to give you money because they trust you, that's a lot. And if yeah. you're able to finish a film, that's huge. Mm -hmm. It deserves to be seen if by anyone, like three people. And don't they're like worry. The, they're like the picture representatives of done is better than perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather. That's how I feel about this first match. Sure. I lost, but damn, it's done. <laughs> God. You're like, I don't have to, I don't have to tweet for like a, a whole day if I don't want to. <laughs> oh man. Awesome. Yeah. People are coming. People are coming hard at me right now. <laughs> it's because uh, I, so, uh, like, while we were sitting here, uh, basically, like, uh, kind of like dogging a little bit on Severin, saying that they like restoring just like crappy movies. Uh, yeah. I did look through like what what else they've done, and it hasn't been all like just like Birdemic level movies. No. Uh, I saw y'all did like a uh, uh, a restoration of uh, the original Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, man, that was this is a huge seller. That one and uh, the Wild Bunch uh, do great for us. Uh, one of yeah. our most recent ones, like obviously we we gear a lot of horror, uh, is the movie The Changeling with George C. Scott. Which if you haven't seen, it's it's ninety nine percent James Wan's entire career in ninety minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. Just his style. There's a reason it was lost for so long. He didn't want anyone to find it. Uh, it's just like there, there there is some great stuff. Uh, we're actually getting ready to we're we're going to be putting out the movie Overboard by with Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, we're gonna I remember that. That was that was one of our parents' uh, favorite movies while we were growing up. Was yeah. Overboard? So that's it's nice. great. Yeah, we're gonna do stuff like that. We we have a bunch of very uh very a very wide array of films, but uh, obviously we skew more for the uh, Italian ripoffs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But. Yeah. Uh, but so, I, yeah, I'm just as excited for Overboard as I am for other things. I can't say. So, what's your uh, what's your connection? Where did where would your love or following of the Schmodown come from? Man, I I've known so many people who have been in the Schmodown. Like uh, one of my one of my oldest friends is uh, Gray Drake. I met her when I first moved here, oh, and wow. she was great. We used to go to the movies all the time, and uh, I was at their wedding and, with her with her husband. I, I was at their wedding with her husband. That's not the proper way to form a sentence uh i was his guest uh no uh but uh yeah <laughs> I, was like a fun wedding. I, was, I was at their wedding and uh yeah she was she was the one who originally showed me the schmo down uh, clark wolf i i did a, a horror trivia thing with uh, she produced and uh, uh i've done horror trivia against tons of the people involved in the schmo down uh, whitney seibold uh, bibiani like there's a lot of wow. names in I there that are people that I, i've rubbed shoulders with in, uh, over the years and and seeing them uh, compete, and, and, and it's always fun to play along. And so I've I've really grown it, uh, to be a huge fan of them. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah, that's cool. Um, I, I I know when, so I can give probably like a little bit of the behind the scenes because it's almost uh, for the most part the truth is out there. Um, mm. Didn't mean for that to be an X Files reference, but whatever. Uh, is that the realistic nature of what did actually happen is you actually were supposed to play someone else. Yeah, that's I'd, true. I, I, I don't know who it was. I don't know if you know who it was. I don't know if you can say who it was or if you don't like, that's cool. Um, I am kind of curious, but it doesn't have to be public knowledge. Um, but you were supposed to play someone else and then they weren't able to make it. So then me and my brother got the message like, Hey, 
can yeah. one of y'all be available? And he wasn't available. And I just so happened to have today off because I had told my manager at work, hey, I'm going to be doing this thing that's going to be on Tuesdays. And I'm going to need whatever Tuesday I get scheduled, that Tuesday I immediately need to have off. Yeah. And so I was, I told her like, Hey, I'll do whatever I can to help you out. To, if you can shuffle people around to make this happen, if you need me mm -hmm. to uh, increase my sales at work, I will do it. I will do whatever it takes to get this day up. So she scheduled me today off, even though I hadn't told her like that I have a match. Oh man. And perfect. then all of a sudden I have a match and I'm like, well, that worked just ducky. The stars align. And as great as that second match was, no offense. I, I, I feel like, we were the main event, man. That that made me like just yeah, I had so much fun this past week. Mm -hmm. Throwing shade your way every which way but loose. When Chris joined in at one point in time, I was like, oh baby, this is this is bread on my butter on my bread. I'm so happy. So this is tough. Uh, I, I will take this opportunity uh to say that oh like, yeah, okay, yeah, even though I won the match, yeah. Uh toast to you, sir, because that was some great character work. You did phenomenal on Twitter. Character in, work, what in are you talking match. about? Okay. I woke up. <laughs> I'm just gonna choke this at that point. Don't get mistaken, <laughs> fool. <laughs> and go throw the Hawaiian shirt back on and get down to business. I definitely didn't message everyone personally and apologize if I offended anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, that, that was a fantastic job today. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, again, like the, everything on Twitter, that was great. It, it It's fun actually being a part of this now officially yeah. being yeah. able to do, to do all of that. It's, it, it was great. I, I loved yeah. it. But once again, I'm thrown into a match with like very little notice. Like, can we stop? Yeah, that's doing just your stick. That's your stick. That? Like, <laughs> call him Robert rate, Reliable Adams, <laughs> dude. At this that's... rate, we're gonna we're gonna have like a tournament, and I'm gonna be thrown into like the championship finals at the last minute, not not knowing that I played all through the rest of the tournament already. Like, that's your Lord. your new character name, isn't the Revenants? Oh, and uh, oh, uh, oh, Robert Adams. <laughs> Old reliable Robert Adams. This is gonna pop up now. I like. I guarantee we're gonna see this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Uh, so we got Vernon saying Andrew is the character best kayfabe work ever. Oh man, thank you guys <laughs> very much. I I appreciate it. Uh, Krista came at Twitter because I I made a goof uh, in my in my uh, original video where I I said uh, TKO yeah. in round two. People are really getting in on me on the rules, man. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> so I, uh, so I've actually seen uh, Krissa asking this uh, a couple of times today. But yeah. Well, oh. when you're in the heat of the moment, <laughs> Andrew for Taco versus John Roca needs to happen. Oh no. <laughs> God, By the yeah. way, this is a this is a family channel, family friendly channel. <sighs> Why the Twitter name? Oh man, that's my birth name. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm talking? sorry about that, Mister Fur oh. Taco. Yeah, man, ask my sister. She uh, she has published uh, records of this. Uh, you know, if that's your last name, I don't want to ask your sister that, <laughs> dude. I saw people going going for me in the in the uh, gotcha. <laughs> I saw people going after me in the in the in the Twitch stream. Like I was watching reading the, the comments. People went right back to kindergarten. Fart taco. I saw uh, that oh one. my god. Yeah. I just I'm excited to get back into the horror world so I can be fear tato again. Back in those days. Fear tato. That's a good one. Yeah, man. Greg gave me that one actually. I wonder if uh, there's any option for like uh FCL players to get into uh exhibition matches. I'd love that. I think it would be a blast, man. I, cause like, I mean, obviously you saw the horror out, like that stuff. I, I, that's my, that's what I've watched. Horror and comedy are the two things that I've watched the most. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm married to a woman who, um, has been opening my eyes to a lot of other movies, but like, uh, yeah, like obviously most of the stuff I watch actually won't even make it onto the Schmodown Cause I watch a lot of like classic sixties movies and, but every once in a while, like in the seventies round. So, you know, you never know. Yeah. Uh, that was something that, so 
of course, as as normal as the way the schmo down and the, at this point the FCL is going, uh, anyone who's coming into that realm, this is no longer just a game of what do you know movie trivia wise. There really is homework that you have to do. Yeah, man. Uh, not only like trying to catch up on movie trivia and try to like quickly fill in what gaps you think you might have, but yeah, it, it's now kind of like the norm in this to be studying your opponent and yeah. what your what your opponent knows and doesn't know, so you know what to, to know and what to not know. Um, your letterbox. Like, what there's is, no like organization a, there. I'm a mess. Well, no, no, but I watch everything. The, yeah, you're like at 3,500 movies watched, basically. And I've but never, I've still never seen any of the Hunger Games. What am I? You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I mean, uh, like that's an impressive amount. And then of course I saw like how much horror you did. I'm like, well. I'm yeah. not putting I'm not putting horror on the wheel. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah, I was so happy I got that one, man. Um I uh yeah, I love I, I love letterbox especially, but now now that I'm in the schmo down, it's kind of a kind of a scarlet letter right there on the front. You can see my weaknesses, my strengths, but the beauty is I have no pattern of how I watch movies. I just watch movies. Like mm -hmm. if I scroll, if I pan over here, I got a collection a mile wide of just like, you know, movies i collect physical media and, and i love watching all of it yep this is a professional this is how i reorganize my camera there but like uh <laughs> yeah there we go that's perfect uh that's but what, yeah I, mine, mine's back where i can't really mess with it so it just stays there yeah, just. <laughs> yeah i uh i use my my cell phone as a as a a, a webcam so i got mm -hmm. uh, i gotta use that um but um yeah man like there's no viewing habits. I just love watching movies and, and seeing anything I can. Like it, it's hard not to get excited and, and, and want to be part of this, this whole thing. If, if uh, this is, this is like the, the Willy Wonka and the Charlie and the chocolate factory. I changed it to the yeah. correct answer. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Um, Chris, do you have any questions for our guest? You are allowed um, to talk every once in a while. Oh, I oh. know. I just uh, before before anything, I want to say Vernon Green. I appreciate your invite. I do, but you're right. I'm too good. I'm too. I'm too big. <laughs> I'm too big to do your show. <laughs> You've been nothing but nice to me on Twitter, but at the same time, suck it. Okay. Well, you might have to reevaluate that because I did his show and I beat you. So, <laughs> hey, well played. We lost Chris, and, and now this whole graphic thing is just out of no. You, you, damn it! Stop I'm it. Coming back. <laughs> Don't worry about it, dude. Yeah, All right, no, you I, fix it. Here's my. There you go. Good job. You guys are brothers. <laughs> I'm about to lose my wrench in here. <laughs> 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 I have the link to the stream. Um, the other thing I wanted, I, I, I kind of wanted to talk about real quick, uh, as, as far as the actual match from today. Um, unfortunately, there was a, a before I get into this. Do I actually have it? Yes, I do. Oh, did you drop uh, it in here? Yeah, I did. Uh, unfortunately, there was a, a a glitch of some sort at the end, and so and nobody got to see the cutscene at the end. So, uh, I have it on here. Y'all want to say, I, I don't know. Uh, like I know, uh, Brad uh, in, or PLD put it up on Twitter, but I don't know if you got to see it, Andrew. Oh, I did. Yeah. I thought it was great, but let's play it again, baby. Yeah. Uh, I was <laughs> rest in peace. Vernon's wrench. <laughs> uh, so let's go through this real quick. Cause this was fun. Hey, thanks for having me on. It's been a blast. I absolutely really enjoyed this. Y'all y'all take care. See y'all later.
Hey, little brother, did you see that? That was fantastic. That's what I'm talking about. I knew that you could do it, coming in here and, and just showing them who's the boss. Yeah, I was so happy I was able to finally knock that out. So first in the Fanatics League, so excited. I'm glad I was able to come in and carve that out for you. Yeah, carving that path like you always do as the older brother. Oh, yeah. Older brother's getting it done first. Absolutely. It's so much fun. Oh, it was so great. I'm going to go call mom and tell her about it. Yeah. See you later. And it done first. That's true. It's true. That is true. Poor Chris. What? Do you, do you have a problem with that? Like, is, is it okay that I did it first? No, you're good, man. You're good. Don't worry about it. Anyways. Uh, so I wanted to bring that up because this was actually kind of like... A, a funny flub uh, that I wanted uh, that I thought was great. Uh, yeah, y'all see, y'all, y- you've seen the the previous match I was in where I sat in the wrong chair. Oh God! So you noticed that the chair that was in that cutscene is not the chair that I was sitting in. I didn't want this chair to be on camera because it looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> So we we started the the stream earlier, and it was just as we were going live. I'm like, oh, I forgot to switch out the chairs to the one that's in the cutscene. This is gonna look terrible. It's Come not here. gonna make any sense. And then uh, during the interview, Steph is all is all asking me like the questions about like uh, like what it's like being here, and I'm like, well, I'm in the right chair this time. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> this whole thing is screwed up. I'm gonna lose this match. Just. Screw it. Yes, <laughs> Dude, let's talk about another interesting flub that uh, seems yeah. to have uh, gone a little under the radar. What was your what was your big wheel round? Why don't you remind us what was what your big real round was? The Kevin Smith? Kevin Smith. And what what was the question that uh, that you answered that got you the win over me today? Another Kevin Smith question. Interesting. <laughs> and then your video that you just showed which is beautiful. Thank you very much. Very Ferris Bueller of you. Um, it got cut off. And guess what started playing next on the Twitch channel? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, wait. No, so you, you were talking about this before in your, your video on Twitter. Is that what, like... Uh, that the, is genuinely I, what started playing next. So your video yeah. started playing, it replayed, was and it, then it... Was it autoplay, or is that what got rated? I Twitch, don't Twitch, know. Twitch rated JMU's, yeah. Oh, man. Really? So, okay. So that was a troll against me. There's part of me that wonders. Okay. I'm so excited. Dude. So today I'm, I'm, I'm hopping on Amazon or eBay or something later and I'm buying like a Jay and Silent Bob action figure to add to my, uh, you've earned my buddy. Christ. (laughs) You've earned it. (laughs) Jeez. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I, 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 I saw you were talking about that in your video. We're like, look, Jason Muse is now twitching. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cute. And but I didn't no. know that that's where it like it rated to. It afterwards. rated right to this to the on the Schmodown channel, right to Jason Muse. So uh, that's all yeah. I'm saying. Little now, interesting. I, I, I'm not that familiar with Twitch. My brother is more knowledgeable. Is that something they can con- they can control? Yeah. Yeah, they can they can choose who to raid to. So I'm wondering like who behind the scenes chose that. Was that Dwayne? Was that PLD who chose that? Either way, like I I just it, I got I some heat with PLD. I'm telling you right now, I'm not afraid would, just because he writes the questions. He doesn't write what comes out of my mouth. I'm gonna find him. <laughs> I would love to find out that that was Paul who chose that and he did it on purpose. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that, would be, that would be so. Funny. It was a beautiful troll. Work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I had so much fun today. It, it was a blast just to hang out and, 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 and be part of this and, and really just get, uh, get in there and, and, and get my first match out of the way, man. Yeah. Uh, here's the good thing. Here's a good thing. Like, I'm not, not like trying to say like, it's a good thing you lost, but the good thing is that your first match is a loss. So now you can go in for a win for your second match. Yeah. It could, it could be way worse. Like I could have confused Jeremy Renner and, uh, Jennifer Garner, you know, and I could have blended them together to be one name. Oh wait, so nowhere, nowhere but up for me, baby. I, I mean, now it's like I kind of understand how the game is played from the inside, and and I can prepare and study and 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 kind of think about that kind of stuff ahead of yeah. time. Like, 
I really did. Like you asked my wife, man, I, I genuinely went in there and I was like, I got to study. And I haven't studied since high school. I went to film school. That thing was a joke. I just paid to make fun of things for four years. I didn't have to <laughs> study at all. And now it's like, I'm like, oh man, I have to study. And luckily I'm married to a teacher. And she went, well, you're too late. Uh, you're going to fail the test. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so I, I again, I, I'm at work. Uh, most most of the people that follow us that view us uh, know, like I, I work a customer service counter for a cable company that I'm not mm-hmm. going to say their names because they're not paying me to do that. So uh, anyway, so in between helping customers ever since I believe it was like Thursday when I found out about this. Um, ever since Thursday in between helping customers, I've just been just studying up like IMDB and Wikipedia and just going yeah. through some things, uh, like, especially after that curveball last week where they asked them like how many movies in the nineties did Martin Scorsese direct? I was like, Oh crap. Like, uh, I've got, I'm going to need to. I'm going to need to be studying some stuff. I was like ready that. for questions like that. I even thought yeah. about, I, I was like, cause um, I, I was thinking, I'm like, man, Jane Silent Bob. Cause um, like, I know Kevin Smith is doing a match later this week. So I figured they were probably going to throw in some kind of like Jason Mewes or, or, or Kevin Smith kind of thing. And, and, Wait, so and Kevin I was, Smith was doing a match and I got Kevin Smith in round two and three. It's the Shmominati. That's what I'm saying, Shmominati. Uh, but uh, like, I thought about, it, I'm like, okay, how many movies was were, were, were James Allen Bob in? Do we do we include the animated movie? Like, th- I was thinking, I'm like, what kind of questions are they gonna ask? Like, is this even? Am I just wasting my time? Like, do I need to watch Spies in the Skies with Will Smith? <laughs> so I know what like what's <laughs> going on. Like, there were a lot of questions I had going in my head. Like, what do I study? And there's no answer. It's just, you know what you know. Like I've seen like 15 Spike Lee movies and they're all fantastic. And I got a question about one of the ones I haven't seen. And it's just, it's, it's just, it's just the luck of the draw sometimes. Yeah. And I should have guessed Denzel because anything good has Denzel. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah and i know i know i was picturing like the movie poster where he's holding the basketball and it said like he got game across it and i was like ah all i kept <laughs> thinking of is white men can't jump yeah all i kept thinking of is woody harrelson and i'm like no don't do it man <laughs> i know I'm uh what, what what was it that brad was calling him like harrowwood or something like that yeah hardwood or uh, hardwood, hardwood. <laughs> god no uh wood hard wood yeah. hair <laughs> wood hair some wood hair but man, all right no, i i'll say all right fur taco get your hardwood out of here <laughs> oh, come on man this is a family show what are you doing i know <laughs> seriously what are you doing but I, I i'll i'll say this completely like um this is this is unrelated to the to the to the match we had today and everything going on in the first class league i had a lot of fun just oh, this entire weekend with both of you guys just going at it on twitter i I'm so excited and I please keep coming at me with the hate everyone on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram to follow me on letterbox. Call my opinions. Terrible. I love it. I eat it up and I'm so glad. Fuels the fire. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what is that from? Oh, it's your five pointer. You didn't get one. Here he goes. I know. What's your five pointer. Oh man. I got one. I got one. No, what what you just did. I, I, that's from a movie. I do a movie trivia thing every day. I have a calendar. I have a day of the week calendar. Today's. Let me see if you can get. I got this because I'm a genius. But uh, let's see if you do it. Okay. Uh, I want good, this I want is a movie trivia calendar. What's the movie? Oh well, I just That's I could have just let you read it. Uh, I want the people to know that they still have two out of three branches of government uh, working for them, and that and ain't bad. I believe that ain't bad. Yeah, it's Mars attacks. Yeah, Jack man. Nixon as the as the president. Yep. God, I, that's one, probably my favorite line of that entire movie. Movie's fantastic. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. yeah, that this the calendar has been a lot of fun with me and my my wife, and we just have fun. And sometimes they get some really weird ones in there. Like they ask, "What's this movie?" Bond, James Bond, but it was specifically from Doctor No. Yeah, at that point, it's like, well, what was the first movie for him to say that in? God, and even then, it's like it's possibly you know whatever luck of the draw. But yeah, man, it's 
it, it, movie trivia is a, a, always going to be a fun thing. And I'm, I'm very glad yeah. that, uh, that I, I've been invited to, to surround myself with psychopaths of the same, <laughs> the same, uh, degree. Oh, yeah. To my point, to the point I made earlier, uh, I want to say it was like Dan Merle, John Roca, like all these guys have, have stated that all the greats still get a loss in there somewhere. Yeah. Man. So what we should expect is that we have not seen the end of Andrew Furtado. We will see a great Andrew Furtado in the oh, FCL and possibly someday worry. in the Schmodown. Don't you worry about it. I'll be back and I will, I will be better. Better than who? Chris, for he, sure. Cause, I mean, cause that's an easy target. Oh, I mean, <laughs> easy target. Yeah. Easy target. A big red target on my face right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what's this? Oh, we got a donation from all of the chat saying, get this no trivia knowing clown off the screen. Great job, all of the chat. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of the, the chat, chat likes to ch- all of the chat likes to chime in on our uh, live streams and uh, harass us. All yeah. of the chat, I'll see yeah. you in the schmodown. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's easy to say I know all the answers until you're in there and then you get something that you just don't know. So yeah. all of the chat, see you in the schmodown. All of the chat. Is <laughs> all of the chat is salty tonight. <laughs> Extra salty chips. <laughs> like salt and vinegar okay. chips is what the chat sounds like. What's with the chip thing? <laughs> okay, so, uh, the, I I can explain this because this was a lot of fun, um, and it had it actually it has nothing to do with you because we already we came up with this concept like almost a month ago type of thing. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to mention names, but there were a couple of people who were not drafted, who were uh, who were going hard on Twitter, and I know you were too because we saw the tweet. Uh, but there were a couple of people going hard on Twitter that they've got a chip on their shoulder because just because they weren't drafted and they're like, wow, I wasn't drafted. I should have been drafted. I've got a chip on my shoulder. It was like, you like, you just came in here just now yeah. and you're complaining about a chip on your shoulder. We've been doing Schmodown reactions. I just spit all over my Screen. I felt we've it. been doing okay. schmodown reactions for like that actually kind of did land on like Andrew's cheek on my screen here. That was really weird, but uh, <laughs> it's Don't okay. You know I, who he is? It's, it's okay. I haven't been vaccinated yet. That was a Falcon um, soldier, but right uh, <laughs> but we're like, we've been doing schmodown reactions for like three plus years. Like, I've we've been in the draft already, and then of course, I played the that one match that I absolutely love bringing up, <laughs> apparently. Um, I was like, ah, like if anyone's got a chip on their shoulder, it's the people who have come before. I was like, now I would actually argue it's the people who were in actually in the Schmodown like last season that are not in the Schmodown now that are now a part of the FCL. Like at that point, I would say, oh, they probably got a bigger chip. But yeah, yeah, and yeah, and they we did. Were- I mean, we saw the first week. Uh, uh, what's his name? Jared was a complete chippy boy. He had a he had a solid chip on that shoulder. It was a Dorito Cool Ranch level of crisp coming yeah. off that, but he won. So uh, I mean, he's got the skills to pay the bills. Did did were, were we there? Was that his last match that we were there for at the studio? No, he, no, he played other matches after that. He's, I just remember, he's, yeah, the one that we were last there year for. He had matches last year because Roxy drafted him last year. Yeah, I, I remember like the one we were there for. Uh, he w- was asked like, "What was the the set of rules that they were arguing over in?" Captain America Civil War. And we're sitting there like Sokovia Accords, the Sokovia Accords, like ah, and he couldn't pull it. Um it, yeah, so that was one of the ones we were we were looking at. So yeah, like them coming back in, and I love what he did. He did the yeah. whole thing. Uh yeah, the so flirt and flouse has a chip. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, flirt and flouse. What a the flirt and flouse has all the chips. Yeah. Um <laughs> that he came in right off the bat because he was the first one who was in the Schmodown who was uh, pushed to the FCL. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Roxy, why aren't you drafting me? What's going on, Roxy? How come you don't have me this? Like, I'm that was the phone. perfect way to go, like, right off the bat. And like, now, if anyone else does it, it's kind of like a copycat. 
Yeah. So he had he had the right the right path to go right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah, man. I I'm excited for this whole season of FCL. We don't really know even how it's going to pan out, but uh, but it's going to be fun regardless, man. It, the two the two shows they've had so far, you know, this one. I mean, you know, suffice to say, had a little bit more heat going into it than the last one, mm-hmm. but uh, Dynasty comes out of nowhere and kills it. And now I can't wait to watch him kick yeah. your butt, dude. <laughs> um god did you see how quickly he answered all of those harry potter questions without even blinking yeah that's at midnight Dude's yeah that, a... that's the thing he's in a different time zone so that was Dude's like a legend he was talking about that i saw him on like an after show talking about that that because of the time zone difference he has like the entire day to rest relax and study yeah. up and then get thrown god. into that match like at midnight yeah, and man. if he's anything like me, I'm usually up to like 4 a.m. working on like Cinefanatic stuff or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That at midnight, like that's the perfect time. If we were playing this match at midnight, like my time, I would have gotten Chronicle. I, I, w- I wouldn't have missed Chronicle. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> God, I saw that thing in theaters twice and I'm like, finally, it paid off. I- Love that movie. Uh, and what I said, I said in the post interview, I was like, I uh, that whole movie just replayed in my head in that exact moment that they, and you can see it on my face. I'm sitting there God, holding this so headboard. I'm like, I was the, so happy you missed the second. Yeah. What's great is uh, like going back and watching it again. Like I'm sitting there, like I'm in my zone just trying to pull that name. And now on the rewatch, I'm looking over at you, you're like, oh. He doesn't know this. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> the one thing I will say, the hardest thing for me to remember, because I'm dyslexic, are movie release years. Uh, okay. That is hard stuff. And it's so interesting to see like where those strengths are. And, and that's something I got to figure out for sure, because it seems yeah. to be a really common trend in both, both Schmo and, and, and First Class. Uh, I was going to make a joke in that because you were saying uh, in regards to that movie release date one, you're like, Toy Story is timeless. It it came out every year. And I was going to, I was contemplating at that moment, like, except for 1992. (laughs) (laughs) That would have been perfect. (laughs) Dude. Yeah. I, I, I will, I will get better at new, at at movie years. I, I, I think, um, it's just it's it's definitely hard because you you um, associate them with you know when you were a certain age you know what I mean mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and I was a kid for twenty five years <laughs> so so well, it's it all it's sense. all one big year yeah that makes sense right yeah but, uh, yeah that, no, the, math, uh, that math checks out yeah th- thank you thank you but uh, yeah man I I I look forward to to getting back in there sometime yeah. Yeah, that was finding a- ways to be more of a dick. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I was too nice this time around. Oh goodness, <laughs> no one could beat me in Harry Potter trivia. Okay, dude, all right, Mister Middle Earth, come on, get out of here with your nonsense. <laughs> and oh, I want so I want my if my wife didn't hate being on camera she would kill it man i'm telling you i had friends texting me going you fool you're messing up i would do great i'm like well then get a character and get in the scl baby get in there that almost sounds like me standing off to the side during your uh studio match during those first four questions i'm like oh my god it's luke evans why aren't you saying luke evans Oh man, those first four questions just uh it was so beautiful. Are you kidding me? That was beautiful. It really took that's why I love that the first the first question on this one was rush hour. I'm like, oh dude, oh, thank I, God. I spent what? all of January watching Jackie Chan movies. I did a whole January oh. January. Whole January. <laughs> January. Oh, oh man. man, I watched probably 40 Chan movies in January, and I gotta tell you, man. That dude's a legend and rush hour is it's not the worst movie he's ever done. I'll tell you that, but it is, it's so funny just to see where people go. I think we know how to work with Jack. Have you ever seen, have you seen a lot of Jackie Chan movies? Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, rumble in the Bronx. 
I think that was that that was probably one of the most if you're not familiar with the movies that are primarily in Chinese mm-hmm. where you're having to read subtitles that's probably one of the easily the most approachable that's the uh, best subtitle Chinese movies that was my it, first it, chance yeah the 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 storyline is really good. It's uh, I, I want to call it simple, but that that's not a slight against like the intelligent level no, of the movie. I know, it, you, it's, mean, it's, you know, there's it's, something it's, it's to easy follow. to relate to. It's mm-hmm. easy to it's relate a, to. Absolutely. And I, I love that movie. In fact, I'm about due for another rewatch of that. Dude, it still holds up. Anytime Jackie Chan is protecting an uncle, I am there with bells <laughs> on. Dude. Um, <laughs> I was going to bring up this movie that uh, he did that it was his first foray into American cinema. And if you haven't seen it, it's worth watching just, just so you can see it. it's called the protector. He made this mm. movie. It's like a hard R uh, version of rush hour. It's so it's the same kind of thing where they had Jackie Chan. And instead of Chris Tucker, it was uh, Danny Ayala, <laughs> believe it or not, Danny Ayala of, uh, of uh, do the right like- thing. Like and, gangster mob mobster movies too. Yeah, yeah. gangster mob movie. And uh, believe it or oh, not, yeah, he, he was the owner of the restaurant in. Yeah, right yeah, quite the singing career at one point in time. Wait, uh, really? But uh, oh, baby, you gotta look up. Papa just wants the best for you. Oh, you're gonna be in heaven. <laughs> it's a great music video. Great music video. But um, so it was them together in like a hard R version. And there's scenes in the protector that are actually in rush hour too, like the, the, the massage parlor and stuff like that. Mm. They, they really, they really tried, but they didn't know what to do with Jackie. Cause they were like, he's got such a kind face, but we want him to be such a bad, bad boy, you know? And so they really tried. And, and it's, it's really, it's really something to see just, just to see Jackie Chan going out of his comfort zone. And, and like, even in the seventies, he was in what cannonball run and stuff like that. Those, those mm-hmm. were like, supporting roles where they would just gave him kind of a stereotype and said, here you go, have fun. Oh, I guess you can kick someone too. But uh, no, the protector is like, they didn't, they didn't fully let him lean into uh, to karate and, and, and fighting. They gave him more gunplay. At one point in time, Danny Ayala does a rocket launcher into somebody's face. Like it's worth watching. I'm telling you, <laughs> give it a look. Uh, but uh, in a historical standpoint, it's, it's a hundred percent worth, uh, worth checking out. Not a great movie, but it is fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, I have a very high tolerance for what a good movie is. Just, just, a, just a <laughs> working at Severin has definitely um, skewed my opinions. Well, I was able to finish it; it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. What do you think I, of I, Indiana I think Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? That movie doesn't exist. I actually, true story, uh, in my Blu-ray collection of it, I threw that disc out. That <laughs> movie and Jurassic Park Two, they don't exist to me. Those are terrible films. Wait, this is, Jurassic this is Art Two or? Jurassic, Jurassic Park 2. The Lost Ooh. World? Lost World. Lost World doesn't exist. You know, I, 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 I say that in a tone of voice like we're about to judge you for this. No. Lost World Lost World was okay. It was. I thought it was a pretty decent movie. It, I thought it was a, like, it wasn't as good, but I thought it was like a, a worthy follow-up. Now, the rest of them afterwards, though. <laughs> Jurassic God. Park 3, you, you say anything bad about my boy William H. Macy, I will have your head, sir. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I remember watching Jurassic Part Three in the theater because it showed it, it showed the trailer, the first trailer for Spider Man before it, and it was the World Trade Center Spider Man trailer. Dude, it, that, if you're familiar Jurassic with Park that, Three was the first movie. I said, "No, friends, let me buy the tickets. Let me buy the <laughs> tickets for everybody today. I've earned this opportunity. And Let's go see like, Jurassic God. Park Three. And yeah, everyone was like. Man, so Alan. glad Andrew spent the money on that one, not me. Alan. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> that was the day I learned. Maybe I should work in a movie theater and get in for free as opposed to uh, wasting my money on just seeing everything. Maybe I don't need to see everything. Um, see, th- that's kind of like the benefit that I have working for a cable company and getting like all the cable companies like full service for free. Careful. Like HBO, Careful. Showtime. Yeah. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm fine. It's a little black box. Jim Carrey put it in. It's no big deal. <laughs> yeah. We get we get an uh, undisclosed streaming service. Um, Have you ever seen us. The Cable Guy? You've yes. seen The Cable Guy. Do you know who directed I, that movie? I hated, I hated it when it first came out, but then I like grew to like it. Dude, I hated movie, it because it was like just, it was not Jim Carrey. Uh, I am in a movie with Jim Carrey. When oh. I was a kid, they filmed... Uh, uh, me, myself, and Irene in my hometown. 
And I'm in it for a oh. very brief second in a panning shot when he's getting married in the first two minutes. That's uh-huh. no big deal. I'll sign autographs later, but you know. <laughs> I didn't know we had a celebrity in here. Yeah. Flower boy. That's what they called me. No, I'm not. Flower boy. Are you holding yeah. flowers? Huh? You're holding flowers? I was, yeah, I was just, I was just a, a, a an extra in the background of one of the shots when they nice. were getting married at the very beginning and make, it's just such a pu- d- dumb pull to bring out, but I had to, I had to say it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with the cine fanatics. I got I got to show up. Yeah. Anyways, if y'all have any questions for answer, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that burn, bro. <laughs> I don't know how I follow up something like that. I was in a movie with Jim Carrey. Okay, cool. Um, All right. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if y'all have any questions for answer, <laughs> we're going to. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you if you want to take off. We, we we have a couple of movie news things that have dropped this week that we kind of want to talk about, and then of course we're going to get into our uh, review of Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, I don't know I, if you've I, seen that. I appreciate the. I have. I've seen it. Um, but uh, I actually I, I do have to dip. But uh, I, I will gladly take you up on that at any other time, man. That, thank you very much for both of you having me on. Yeah. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I talk Blu-rays all the time. I'm a huge physical media collector. So if you if you like talking Blu-rays and, and, and movies, just just hit me up on Twitter. Follow me on Letterbox. Yeah, over there. I, I'd love to talk to everybody about that stuff. So thank you guys so much for having me on. I genuinely appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I don't see no one's dropping in any questions real quick. So yeah. Uh, Andrew, thank you for being on. Mm-hmm. It's, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure competing against you today. Again, going back to what I was saying at the beginning, we have no idea who you were. So I had no idea at least like, again, when I was dropped into a match with McWeenie and, Andrew Guy, I knew what to expect, oh, and what yeah. I expected, what I expected was holy crap! Here he holy goes, crap, holy crap! <laughs> you're like, gonna oh, be, you're well. gonna be 55 one day, going, oh guys, I, I don't know why you're from Boston. All of a sudden, oh guys, I tell you, one time I went against Andrew McWeenie and Drew <laughs> Guy, and oh, oh boy, let me tell you, ain't no one harder. I don't know why you're from Boston. But uh, I, I I don't know, but uh, I know uh, uh, one of our uh, favorites, uh, Garth McMurray, is going to watch this later, and he's probably going to uh, like want to school you on a proper Boston accent because that's where he lives. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh, so I also wanted to tell you personally, thank you for being the long list of Andrews that I have to play. <laughs> hey man, like, yeah, I, no, I'm glad. Can I, I can please keep play someone not going. named Andrew. <laughs> No, there's a couple more in the FCL, so you're gonna have to fight a few more Andrews at the end of the day. Man. Actually, Apparently. I was gonna say, I just got some news right here. Apparently, uh, next week you are going to face Andrew Demolanta in a Star Wars match. Good luck! Oh, Great. Boom. I'm there screwed on that one. <laughs> I know. So uh, I just want to put it out there. I know Star Wars. I don't know like Andrew Demolanta, Alex Damon level of Star Wars. That no ain't one happened does. in here. When I heard even. I, the last uh, spectacular that was live that we could go to, I remember sitting there watching it, it like at the at the event, and they asked like how many horns are on uh, Darth Maul's head. And I'm like, at this point is when I'm like, I'm done with Star Wars. I, I this is, has has officially surpassed what I would know. I could tell you he had horns on his head. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. More than two. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you so much again for having me on. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, Vernon saying in all seriousness, thanks for being here. If you ever want to come <laughs> on my show, the door is always humble. I'll take you up on it, man. Don't worry. I'll definitely back out last minute. Don't worry. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Anyways, Andrew, right, thanks. Yeah. And now I got to change this real quick. There we go. Ooh. Back to business as usual. Um. So, yeah. That was that was it for FCL. Now, the thing I wanted to talk about, we were talking about uh, Patreon.com. Um. On uh, right now we have what what is that tier level for the is it Maverick? Yeah, the yeah. Ma- the the Maverick tier is where you're able to join us for like movie trivia sessions, essentially to like study. Um, someone else may have a match at some point. Um, so we will continue movie trivia studying. I want to add to it that 
at that tier level, <laughs> we're also going to do whenever either one of us has a match, we will do a an exclusive Patreon watch along of it, where we're going to, uh, and this is if Twitter, uh, not Twitter, if. Uh, no, not even Twitch. If YouTube allows us, because like as of right now, we're going to have to replay it off of Twitch. So if YouTube is not going to cancel it and say like it's breaking like content ID or whatever YouTube, crazy YouTube things it does, um, we're going to watch it again. Um, did I was I was thinking maybe this coming Thursday. Does that sound good to you? Uh, let's talk about it and come up with the okay. date because we didn't we didn't come up with a date yet so let's let's talk about it, come up with a date and then we'll uh, pump it out there for patreon and twitter and all that to know okay yeah so i, w- I want to do it soon but we'll we'll uh we'll we'll get that re- released on uh social media but yeah if you are at that maverick tier um you'll get the invite to come for that so basically therefore if you're if you're in the maverick tier and you're helping us study then you'll you also get the benefit of uh hearing what like our thoughts feelings opinions were like during the actual match so um we'll be doing that and i'll i'll be able to like sit there like yeah this is what was going through my head during this stupid question or whatever (laughs) like uh, that chronicle one that okay yeah i didn't mean the questions are stupid i'm just using an adjective because that's what popped in my head paul is going to kill you paul's gonna kill me anyways at least i got the uh ed harris question right (laughs) (laughs) anyway what what are we up to next what's going on next let's move into some movie news uh the first one first movie news i want to kick into real quick is uh and this is gonna be short y'all so um it was announced that, uh, of course, they're doing a Creed 3, because why wouldn't they? C- Creed 2 and 1 were fantastic. So they're Creed doing 3D. a Creed 3. What? Creed 3D? I don't need another 3D movie that could potentially star Stallone, but I, mean, I guess that's okay, because the new story on this one is that Creed 3 is not going to have Stallone in it. Um, Thoughts yep. and feelings on this? Honestly, this is the way I thought they were going to go. It's the way I think they do need to go. I think that you do need to have a movie now where Stallone is only a felt presence and not an actual physical body in the movie. Um, you you have, you, I mean, you go back, you look at those other movies, you look at Adonis's whole story. Uh, he was living in the shadow of his father. Then he, you know, He's had to pave the way for himself, kind of break out of that in the second one, had to, you know, uh, essentially go and do what his father couldn't essentially with the with the Russian. And now what I think they need to do is they need to break him out from underneath the shadow of Rocky. And he needs to be able to stand on his own as his own person, as his own fighter. Uh, without being underneath the shadow of other other fighters who came before him. So I think it makes narrative sense for Rocky to not be a part of, at least in a physical manner, be a part of the third movie. Now, what that means for Stallone and Rocky's character, as far as does, is Rocky going to die off screen? Is he just not going to be present? He's going to have just left and not come back. Remains to be seen, but narratively, I think it makes sense that Rocky's not part of it. Yeah. So, my question that I have on this is, especially for Rocky, um, we've seen in the in the previous movies he gets diagnosed with cancer. Uh, pretty much like uh, Adrian has passed away. Uh, I think in the last movie, if I remember correctly, even Polly has passed away. Like all of his friends and family have all passed away. And like I know, inevitably, we as an audience were looking for that that denouement for for Rocky himself where he passes away and we want to see that like honored and like really felt because I mean, for the most part uh, us as film fans, especially of the Rocky series, it's kind of one of those things. It's like a loved one passing away and you're like, I just want to pay my respects to it. I, I was kind of hoping 
and it, it, this is the weirdest thing to say. I was kind of hoping he would be in the third movie and would inevitably die. In the movie. Die. God, this is so weird. Uh, I die. But I mean, I, that's what that's what I want to see. I want to yeah. see the the closure yeah. of it. Yeah. I want I, I want to be one of the ones as the audience watching this movie. I want to be put in the position where I feel like I'm at that funeral, paying my respects to Rocky Balboa. But I think I think honestly, you can still get that. That's what I'm saying. Like the movie opens with Rocky's funeral, essentially. Uh, I, I I I would, I, and I know we talked about this before, but I feel like we might be like a little. I, I feel like that might be cheating your audience a little. Like you, you want the position where potentially where Rocky's back in like the hospital bed. You, you again, as the audience, you want to be able to look at that screen yeah. and tell Rocky by as you yeah. hear like the heart monitor flatline type of thing. You, you, you again, also this want is that really weird to say, but you, you also want that potential last nugget of wisdom from Rocky, something, yeah. a, a final line that he can go out on and go, yes, that feels closure. It gives me closure that Rocky gives that final line as he passes on. Yeah, I get uh, it. Uh, absolutely. I get it. But I think, honestly, there's a side of it where the, the truth is, I think that they do potentially go with. There's there's two things I think they go with. I think they either do go with the off screen death and it opens with the funeral because again, this is Creed. This we're this is Adonis's story. This isn't this isn't a Rocky story. It's a part of the Rocky quote unquote universe. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I think that they do is that he's alive still. He's just no longer present in Adonis's life. Simple. I don't know. That, I feel like that might be just a little bit a little weird. I get that these movies are supposed to be about Adonis, but. I, I feel like going that route would just ignore the history that Rocky has. I want closure on how Rocky has lived his life and what his like if his final moments were something as equally grand as the movies have made his life to look. It's it's honestly it's simple. Adonis goes, hey, Rocky had to go take care of something states over or whatever somewhere and he last thing he told me is it's time for me just to stand on my own without him kind of a thing and then so there we go boom move on then leaving the audience at a point where we're never going to find out like if and when rocky dies and how he dies (laughs) and get that closure like i'm talking about you don't need that for every character now here real quick it's something that just dawned on me uh this doesn't mean that a rock or uh, Rocky uh, Creed four can't happen. And maybe Stallone returns in Creed four to give us that goodbye. Maybe his death pass. It, it, it happens in a fourth Creed and he's just not going to be there in the third Creed. Maybe he has like a small part in the fourth one. This third one is all about Adonis being on his own. And the fourth one is where all of a sudden, yeah, Adonis gets that phone call. Hey, Rocky's in the hospital. And that's the small role is he quickly gets to the hospital to be by his side. Yeah, no, he definitely comes back in the fourth one, but he comes back in the form of a robot servant. Oh, good Lord. (laughs) Happy birthday, Polly. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it makes sense for the fourth one, right? Yeah, sure. And And then the fifth one, the robot Rocky gets in a street fight. Oh God! Anyway, anyways, y'all in the chat, what do y'all think of this? Let us know while we're talking about this. Uh, I well, I mean, I do actually want to move on to the next news topic because um, this one was actually really interesting, uh, only because of the movie that's being referenced. I'm a huge fan of the movie, uh, so we got the trailer for uh, Space Jam: A New Legacy over the course of this past week. And uh, this trailer is just completely littered with Easter eggs. And if I didn't have to work a 40 hour a week job and run like cine fanatics and do everything and also have to prepare for the FCL, I probably would have sat down and done a video where I analyze every single little cameo and Easter egg that was in that trailer. Cause zoom even- enhance zoom enhance. Oh, real quick. Did you see the uh, Warner brothers actually released a video the next day saying, did you see all the Easter eggs? And they start like yeah. being out. Someone you are like, you're taking away a YouTuber's job. <laughs> Stop yeah. stealing our jobs. 
<laughs> it it was only it, it didn't do all of them either. It was kind of very bleh. Yeah, it was very bad. Did you see that one? Yes, that planet said Game of Thrones. We saw that. Look, I'm well, not gonna talk. I'm not gonna talk highly of Warner Brothers because they they uh, take monetization on our uh, trailer reaction. So, yeah, um, I don't mind doing a trailer reaction to them, but I hope we don't get that many views so they don't get that much money off of off of our views since they're taking all the monetization. Like the second we upload that reaction to YouTube, it, we get an email saying, "Oh." Warner Brothers found their copyrighted material in your trailer. Trailer reactions should be fair use, but that's a discussion for another day. Actually, no, I'm perfectly fine with the the video getting as many views as possible because that's more people who could sign up to the Patreon. Well, Hello, yeah. Warner Brothers I mean, can't have that too. money. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, back to this. So, uh, what was it like a week or two ago? There was the the whole thing that um, they're taking Pepe Le Pew out of it. Because those of y'all familiar with Pepe Le Pew's character, he's a skunk that in the cartoons from back in the day, he usually would just be all over this random black cat who always seemingly inevitably gets a white stripe painted down her back and tail. So therefore he would confuse her with a female skunk and then he would essentially force himself upon her and like hug her and try to kiss her and stuff, which was cute and funny back in the day. Nowadays, uh, it doesn't work so much. Ah. So therefore he was removed from this movie. He was had like a small scene and stuff, but Warner brothers said they took him out because of that. He's problematic. Yeah. And yet we get the trailer and one of the Easter eggs is at the very end. They're showing a basketball game with the people in the audience behind and a group of the people in the audience are the droogs from A Clockwork Orange. Um, I love A Clockwork Orange. I thought it was a fantastic movie. It's probably my favorite Kubrick movie. But that's that's very problematic because the droogs are known for ultraviolence, beating, beating up uh, homeless people and rape. They do it a couple yeah. of times in that movie. Uh, the The idea of that movie is that uh, they're focusing on Alex DeLarge, uh, who is completely okay with doing all of this bad, bad stuff. And then he goes through a, a training technique while in prison uh, to help him like feel basically feel sick whenever he gets those ideas and thoughts of doing ultra violence and rape and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a weird thing that you took out the skunk who was uh, playfully forceful, I would say, according to the old cartoons and the old standard of thinking with those. And you put in these people that are just blatantly okay with rape. And I'm actually getting t- kind of tired of saying that word during this video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, a little weird. It's an interesting uh, <laughs> dichotomy. I don't know. It's a. Uh... It's a weird thing to to yeah it's it's what well, what do they call it uh it's on the verge if not fully on hip the train of hip being hypocritical kind of it's it's like here's here's your character who's definitely problematic we're not gonna put him in the in the movie because look it's we know times have changed this doesn't play well anymore this doesn't play how it used to uh, people's, you know, the stories that they they've gone through, their experiences are very real. So these these this thing could trigger those experiences and make them uh, feel things that they want to leave behind and move past. I get that, but then you have the Drugs, who are far worse. Yeah. So I think what we're saying here is, why did y'all put the Drugs in there? <laughs> Oh, I forgot I had... Oh, I did not upload it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I thought I had the image of it to... Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's it's an interesting discussion. It's, it's a discussion I think that uh, should definitely be had in the public discourse because it's like, okay, there you are. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The, the, them back there behind the player's left arm. The they're in white with the black hats, yeah, yeah. It's like we we get it. You did a great thing by taking out a problematic character that people 
you know, could be hurt by. But then you entered and you put in more problematic characters that people could be hurt by. It's like, okay, so there's two ways to go at it. Either leave the skunk in or take out the droogs. Yeah. Which way, which way are you actually leaning on this? So I don't know. Interesting conversation. Interesting conversation to be had. Uh, I actually, I, ha- I haven't been following it too much. So I'd be interested to see what people are actually saying in terms of, well, why? Why? Basically that. But here's where I'm curious of. Are we going to see a situation where uh, when the movie comes up, we may see that exact scene, but the droogs have been edited out by the time the movie is actually released? It's possible. I I feel like that's probably that's probably a very strong possibility. And I would not be surprised if it actually goes that way. The and one movie in Warner Brothers history that isn't actually in the movie. <laughs> yeah, pretty much at this point. Um, so, yeah, really interesting there. Um, but let's move on from controversy and let's talk about something fun and interesting like giant monkey versus giant lizard. And I know Kong's an ape and not a monkey. This the, we're, we're, we're cine fanatics, not zoology fanatics. I feel like monkey's a funner word to say. Yeah. Monkey. Monkey. Mm, yeah. Monkey. Anyways. So Godzilla versus Kong was released this past week as well because, you know, we didn't have enough to do as is already. Let's just release like a big uh, headline movie like that and let's all watch it and let's give our opinions of it. Um, Because of the situation with like the FCL and everything, we haven't had had the ability to actually just sit down and record and edit our actual review, our thoughts of it. So we're going to talk about it on here because that just seems to be the way to go. So, yep. Anyways, let's get let's dive into this review of this movie. What do you think? I thought uh, th- there's there's here's the thing. I'll, I'll kind of preface this whole thing with you know just so you can kind of get a, a, a proper scope here of what I thought of the past three movies that came before it. Uh, Godzilla 2014 liked it. I really enjoyed it. Thought it was great. Kong Skull Island really liked it. Thought it was really good. We did a watch along that's on our Patreon. You can definitely check that out if you sign up on to our Patreon. Um, plugs out of the way. Then King of the Monsters. The, the, the monster fighting was great. It was really cool, really fun, as it should be. But just so much of that movie just felt like a drag to me. Mm-hmm. And kind of felt like it was just being kind of pulled down when it should have been light and fun and, and floaty up here. So, uh, how dare you let life get in the way? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, sometimes it happens. You got stuff. Um, But this movie, I feel like, was a return back to, say, like, the Kong Skull Island and the 2014 Godzilla for me. In that it was was lighter. It was more fun. Uh, There was, it was, the pacing was a lot better for me than than, uh, King of the Monsters was. So, Overall, I would say, like, generally speaking, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was, I thought it was just a a nice blast of a blockbuster movie to to check out. Uh, definitely, it's definitely flawed for sure. There's so many flaws in it, but it, it again falls in that in that category of movie for me, where it's like, look, I get it. I'm not a scientist, so I don't need to actually test or care about the flawed science that's in this movie. I just like watching big monkey punch, big lizard. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I, I kind of agree with that. Like the previous Godzilla movies I have not liked. It's all been, it's all been about the humans. The human storyline was first and foremost. And I want to see Godzilla in my Godzilla movie. Uh, yeah. And then I can't because y'all are filming it at night or under the cover of something that's blocking most of the views. So you don't have to pay extra for those really good special effects that would actually show us one giant Titan Kaiju monster fighting another one. We, we didn't get to see that. Like even in King of Monsters, there's there was very that's little cool. able to be seen in that. It's nighttime uh, as well as smoke and fire. Yeah, they they put positioned everything where it was nicely hidden. 
just uh, and as movie lovers you tend to recognize these these things that the they do in the production of a movie to hide to save uh, yeah. to leave it a mystery type of thing and let your mind fill out. I don't want my mind to fill out like one monster punching another one. I want to see the monster punch the other one. I want to see yeah. Godzilla take a punch to the gut and be like, whoo, like uh, Mike Tyson's punch out or just the punch out of you, you don't want the copyrighted version. But like when someone gets punched and they do the <laughs> type of face, like that's what I want to see in these movies. And we haven't gotten those. Uh, Kong Skull Island, it was mostly daylight. It had a lot more, it had a lot more to do with Kong and his presence of this island than it really had to do with the humans. So I kind of like that. This movie, this movie was all about the, the monkey on lizard action. And I, I, I really liked it for, so first of all, the storyline was all about basically the two of them fighting. Yeah, there was still the like, what are the humans doing? Because that has to be what's driving the movie. Um, you just can't have these two titans pop up and just start fighting each other because yeah. it doesn't make sense. But you can't dive into a history, they have a history together, their ancestors, yeah. all that. Yeah, I like that this movie it, it brought it together. And what it did is it completely ignored the realism of the previous movies. While the previous movies, again, were more human-focused, this one was less human-focused, more on the monsters themselves. So, therefore, the whole movie felt like a live-action cartoon is what it seemed like. And yeah. especially when they when they fight in, what is it, Hong Kong, I believe? <laughs> there, and it takes place at night, so you can't see anything, but the city is so lit up. There's colors all over the place. All the smoke and dust is all... It, the light's reflecting off of the the dust and smoke that they're kicking up like it actually well, would in real life. To be so fair, therefore, it, it, it's lit up better. To be fair, their fight starts at night, but it does end up getting to daylight when things happen. Are we doing spoilers here? Um... I, I would say for the most part, there's really not any spoilers to give away. You kind of already know everything about it. Um... The, the biggest, I mean, if you're talking about in the terms of like Mecha Godzilla, okay, there you go. yeah, everyone already knows that Mecha Godzilla is involved in this movie. So, Got um, it. It. yeah, sweet. So, okay, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I like the fighting now. Like, what you were bringing up though is the science behind it. Uh, the very first fight between the two of them, they're both on an aircraft carrier. There's no way two kaiju are going to be standing on an aircraft carrier and that thing is still going to be floating. I mean, you get you get two humans standing on a fun noodle in a swimming pool and that fun noodle is going to sink. Guaranteed. So. There was an image. Just I didn't perfectly balanced humans on a fun noodle. That thing's going down. I didn't think about it, but that's actually a really good way of putting it. <laughs> that is. <laughs> or maybe, maybe, maybe here's the thing. Have you as a human tried to stand on like a boogie board? Yeah. In the pool. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. if it's going to slip out underneath you, you, you fall through water, you go splash. Um, so yeah, the science behind that. Plus I think at that point you're talking about like, there was some like size fluctuation between them too, because the size of them to be able to stand on aircraft carrier together, uh, Aircraft carriers are big, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're that big. Uh, so what I think is th there was some size fluctuation that happened. So they were a little bit smaller there, but when they when they got into the city and then you got uh, Mecca out mm -hmm. there, uh, they they grew a little bit. They, they grew, a, grew a lot of it. So... Yeah, we're talking about that. We're talking about like just the the, the basic plot devices and stuff um kind of a lot of the science the, the science to make mecha godzilla actually work was very very Weird. science fiction heavy and it's like there's no way this actually works um at least to the at least to the knowledge of public who knows what the military is doing and whatnot so i, I doubt that they're taking dinosaur skulls and starting up giant robot dinosaurs with them but either way 
That's um, a plot line from like a '90s cartoon, easily. That 100%. some evil person is just going to take a skull and hook it up to electronics. Yeah. Like there is, there was a lot of stuff. Like I, I want to run through kind of things that were kind of off to me. Like obviously, like we have characters in this movie who are related to other characters in the franchise that mm-hmm. we didn't really know until the we saw online later that they were related. Um, they really didn't spend any time explaining that. Uh, there's the whole, the whole section with, uh, Brian Tyree Henry and, uh, Billy Bob, Billy Bob Thornton. No, <laughs> uh, Millie Bobby Brown. There it is. The, I couldn't confuse I two confused. <laughs> more farther away people. Millie Bobby Brown, Billy Bob Thornton are hey, nowhere you know- near each other. You're confusing people that have three names. <laughs> like, okay. Billy is in both of them. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, their Billy whole story, story, their whole story wasn't like completely necessary. It, it had like a, why, why are they going on this adventure? They didn't really do a whole lot for anything in the movie other than just, here's some more human characters that you can get some kind of experience from. And of course, Millie Bobby Brown was in the King of the Monsters movie. So, uh, so for the most part, I mean, you know, there, there, there's some, there was some flimsy stuff within like the story, but I say all that to, with trepidation because the honest truth is, is I don't really care. I don't really care that all that stuff was flimsy. I don't really care that I don't understand or buy into the science. I don't care that there are people in this movie who were doing things that didn't really matter for the overall plot of the story. All I care about is Big Monkey Hit Big Lizard. Because we had fun with this movie. This was a fun movie. And not only did I get Big Monkey Hit Big Lizard, which is what I wanted since they made the connection in Skull Island from the beginning, we got Big Monkey and Big Lizard Hit Big Metal Lizard. Even better. All, all on board for that. Yeah, I don't care about the science. I don't care about all this stuff that's flawed or flimsy. I I care about that stuff in movies that there's a lot of character development too, that there's a lot of like story that things are hinging on. Like I care about that stuff in those movies. For this movie, I care about just the fun of the experience of the movie. And I think this this reminds me of something I've said before, but it's sometimes you there's there's a place for these movies. There's a place for a movie that is very heavy story. You got to pay attention and understand what the characters are feeling, what they're going through. And then there's a place for movie where big animal hit another big animal. <laughs> and you just have fun with that. It's just fun. It's it's fun. It's a spectacle. It's fun to watch. It's fun to participate in as an audience going, "Yeah, hit him King Kong. That's awesome." Just leave the brain at the door type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So this movie uh, filled out that second that second bucket very well. Yeah. Uh, I will say out of all the Godzilla Kong movies in this like monsters universe that they've done, uh, this is easily my favorite like yeah. by far. So um, like, like I said, it's a giant cartoon. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, there wasn't a single part of this movie that I felt like dull or bored. Like I had the previous movies. Um, this one this one was a blast. Uh, I would probably actually give this, with the exception, of, yeah, some of the science was a little weird. Um, I'd probably give this like a seven point five out of ten. I I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, again, with regard to what I just said, we're talking about you know when we're when we're rating movies, we're talking about I'm going to rate the movie based on what the movie is and how much I enjoyed it based on what the movie is. I would give it an eight out of ten in terms of like just overall enjoyment i would say it's a very solid enjoyable blockbuster movie if you just want something easy to throw on and be like yeah i'm just gonna relax and just chill out with a with a fun movie this is definitely up that alley for sure yeah. so that's i mean that's that's gonna be that's gonna be our like official rating here you got 7.5 i got an eight guys that is our official review of godzilla versus king kong we are clipping this out you are watching this as a clip out you can check out everything else that we do on the channel. Uh, this is from a stream called The Tagline that we do Tuesday night starting at 9.30 Central Time. So come check out that live. We do all sorts of fun stuff. We talk about movie news. We talk about reviews. We do all sorts of stuff there. So come back on Tuesday. Check that out. 
And if uh, if you want to help us out, if you want to help us out at all, hit up that Patreon. Check out the uh, tiers that are right for you there. Big, big help to get our channel where it needs to go and all of that. So I want to thank you guys for checking out this video, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah. Anyways, as for our stream tonight, if y'all have any other questions, anything else y'all want to add, we're going to be winding this down. So mm -hmm. get those questions in. Uh, Chris, where can we find you? <laughs> A little weird you, thing to say, but I mean, you can find. I mean, I mean, if you leave your room and you walk across the apartment, you can find me in my oh, room. That's right. You're in that other bedroom that's in this domicile, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> for all the rest of you, if you want to find me, just my thoughts and what I'm doing, generally speaking, uh, you can follow that little uh, little handle down there. It says at Chris Adams MLP. That is both Twitter and Instagram, and technically Letterboxed as well. So you can mm -hmm. follow all that stuff there. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find me, I'm going to be in that bed here in a little bit because I'm just mentally exhausted after today. And I feel sure. like there's a good reason why. <laughs> um, but you can follow me at Robert Adams, MLP, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox as well. You as also, blah, 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 you can follow the Cine Fanatics, both of us together at Cine Fanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram. Good yep. place for information in regards to us. Yep. And if you guys are jumping in here, watching this for the first time, you have no idea what the FCL stuff that we were talking about earlier is. You definitely want to check out, first of all, the Schmodown proper, which is over at youtube.com slash, I believe, the Schmodown. Mm -hmm. uh, check it out there. And then on top of that, you want to check out the FCL. It's going to be live on Twitch every Tuesday. It is twitch.tv slash the Schmodown. And you can check that out there. I will be getting a match at some point within there. And yours obviously was just today. So that VOD is up and viewable if you missed that match. It was a great match. So I definitely recommend checking that out. But that's for all you movie trivia lovers out there and want to know what this Schmodown FCL thing we're talking about is. Also, oh, yeah. make sure you you hop on Patreon, patreon.com uh, slash cinefanatics. At the $1, uh, the Neo tier, you'll have access to our Discord. Uh, like we said, we at, five, at the do tier, $5, you can do our monthly watch-alongs for movies. Um, and then going up to the Maverick tier, you're able to join us for movie trivia study sessions. And now also uh, watch-alongs of our matches for the first class league. So a lot of that's a, that's a really good tier, I would say, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to go back and talk about that match and just what was actually going through my head when he gets a match, what's going to be going through his head while playing it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, you'll, you'll want to hop on that if you want to get like the inside uh, scoop type of thing. Spo spoiler alert uh, for me and my match would be. Ah! Yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah. Thank you for turning your face away from the microphone for that. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't look like we have any other questions, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I would like to thank everyone in the chat for being here. Also, our thanks goes out to Andrew Furtado for joining us uh, tonight. It's a lot of fun to get like some insight, find out who he is, what he knows uh, type of thing. Uh, again, thanks for him be to being here. I can't blah, 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 blah anymore. Thanks, thanks for to him being the thanks thing. Thanks to, to him, him for being physically here on this. Yeah. Thanks, thanks to him for for losing against me. Um, <laughs> At which level do we get a free bag of chips? You know, I've bought so many bags of chips lately for all of this stuff that I need to go without buying chips for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, I still have like my, I still have my two here, and oh, I'm not doing this for any like metaphor or anything. I'm just really hungry right now. Yeah, I kind of want to eat also. Um, those, are good. So, <laughs> those of y'all watching, make sure you like, comment on this if you're watching it on a replay. Uh, share this with people so they can see what you watch, and then they'll silently judge you for it. Um, thank ASMR. you. ASMR. Yeah, ASMR. Fantastic. That's our new channel, Ship Fanatic ASMR. Uh, make sure you subscribe Nearly. to the Cine Fanatics. Give us a subscribe. That helps out with the YouTube algorithm stuff. And yeah, that's going to do yeah. it for tonight. So as for my brother, as for myself, as for everyone in the chat, I guess, thank y'all for watching. Y'all all have a great evening and good night. See ya. Later. <laughs>